Hi, I am Dr. Amos Yav. I myself am a clinician, the inventor of the biphasic calcium sulfate and the CEO of Ogma Biomaterials. In this video, I would like to demonstrate how to work properly with bond appetite bone graft cement. Working with bond appetite bone graft cement can simplify dramatically the way that we perform augmentation procedure. The entire graft placement and stabilization can be done in less than a minute. The healing period is reduced to three months until you can place or load your implants and of course no need for membrane coverage as long as your soft tissue is primary closed and well sutured. So only three simple consecutive steps are required in order to place or stabilize your graft. You need to place the graft, press it for three seconds and close your flap. So let's get started. In order to be familiar with the material, we provide you a training kit. The training kit includes training manual, two demos syringe of bond appetite, and mandible, and a dry gauze. So let's get started. This is the bond appetite syringe. It contains the powder, the liquid, a shaft, two pistons, blue indicating line, and the syringe cap. Now, in order to activate the material, all you need to do is push the shaft against the palm of your hand and start pushing the piston until the first one reaches the blue line. At this stage, the material gained the right viscosity and is ready and prepared to be placed in the grafted site. Now, remove the syringe head. All you need to remember to do is three simple consecutive steps. Place, press, and close. And in less than one minute, you can finish the entire procedure. Now, let's do it together. Approach to the defect site in 45 degrees angle and start ejecting the material into the grafted site in 45 degrees angle. Now, during the ejection, use the syringe head in order to help you to stabilize the material by a small condensing movement that you do with the syringe head. At this stage, you should take a dry gauze, place it above the cement and press it firmly for three seconds. Now the material is already well stabilized. If you need to shape, you can shape it a little bit and press it again for three seconds and you can close the flap. However, it's very important that your soft tissue will be primary closed and well sutured. That's all, simple as that. Now, I would like to demonstrate how to work with bond appetite for socket preservation technique when you don't reflect the flap. Press the shaft against the palm of your hand until the first piston reaches the blue line. Now the material is already activated. Remove the syringe head, approach to the socket site and eject the material into the socket. Slightly overfilled it and now you take a dry gauze and press firmly the material into the socket. Now if there is not enough place for your finger between the teeth, use a spatula or an elevator peristyle and press above the dry gauze. Now you cannot leave the material exposed. What you need to do is to take a barrier, which can be a simple collagen sponge, and place it above the graft. However, it must be sutured together with the soft tissue. So the technique is in that way. Hold the collagen sponge in your hand, insert the needle from the buccal aspect, insert it to the bottom of the collagen sponge, and from up to down. Insert the needle into the lingual aspect. And place the sponge above the grafted site and make your first suture. 
to stabilize the collagen sponge in place. Now remember that the collagen sponge must be stabilized together with the soft tissue by its first knot. After stabilizing the collagen sponge in place, or the membrane in place, you continue with a crisscross suturing in order to protect it in a better way. Now the graft is protected and you can leave it exposed in that way. Soft tissue will migrate above the graft and will close the area. That's all.